Well, it's day. It's the day, and it's not a good day. Um, I have to go to the dentist, and I'm terrified right now. And I have to drive. I'm agoraphobic, and people with agoraphobia can't even really get into a car and drive, or even leave their house. And oh my God, I'm shaking right now. I don't know if I could do this. So I canceled about three dental appointments in a row, and uh, I have to get surgery right now. And I don't want to do this, and I'm actually hyperventilating. And for a lot of my subscribers, you're probably like, what the hell is wrong with you? You do videos about antiques and, you know, all sorts of other things, and are you normal? And the answer is no, and hold on a minute, let me get in the car. I have the car running. Um, I'm shaking. I just took two Xanaxes, and actually I should have taken four. Um, I usually only take two, but yeah, I'm trying to adjust the seat in the car. I haven't driven the car in so long. My husband can't take me, and he told me to use the car. And my daughters have to go to work, and they can't take me. And I can't breathe right now. I'm so terrified. I have to get five root canals, or at least six. I don't know, she has to check and do assessments. I have to get an implant. I have to get several crowns. Pretty much, I'm fucked. And here's the issue. I'm not afraid of the pain. You know what I'm afraid of, guys? I'm afraid of the lack of control. Being in that chair, like I call it chair torture. All right, I'm a little bit, I have a little bit of a dark sense of humor. But being in that chair is the problem. Not knowing that I can't move, I can't get out of the chair, I'm powerless, I'm not in control. The fact that I can't make her stop, she'll be in the middle of surgery. Um, what if I can't breathe? What if I feel like I have to swallow and I can't swallow my own spit? What if I feel like I have to jump out of that chair because I'm having a panic attack? And my little dog is in the window right now and he's actually cheering me up. I don't know if you can see him, but he has this sad look on his face because he knows that his crazy ass mother is terrified of going to the dentist right now. And so I had to go back. Now she told me for each root canal, which I need about six of them, I had to go back two or three times for each one. That alone in itself is awful for someone with agoraphobia. And a, pe a person with agoraphobia is phobic about going outside. We're not actually afraid of going outside. We're afraid of being out of control. So basically the, the problem lays in the fact that if you're somewhere and you're not near your house and you get a panic attack, you wanna be back at home as soon as possible. You don't wanna be at the, I don't know, at the supermarket. You don't wanna be at the dentist. You don't wanna be at the dollar store. You wanna be back at your house. So that's why you leave the house less and less because you may get panic attacks in public, um, at the supermarket, on the train, on a bus, in a car, and then you go out somewhere else and it happens somewhere else, and then your world gets smaller and smaller and smaller until the fact you don't leave your house at all, which is where I am right now. And I can't believe that I'm actually gonna be driving right now, so let's get this car in park. I don't have a stand for my phone, so I have to figure out a way to do this. And right now I'm having chest pains. Okay, excuse my expletives, but holy shit, I have to be there in 15 minutes, and I don't even have a mask. Masks are required. And uh, yeah, nobody in my house even has them right now. They're all, like two of my kids are at work and my husband's sleeping. He worked the night shift. And I'm backing out of the driveway right now and I can't even see what the hell I'm doing. Um, holy shit, okay, I'm terrified. I'm actually crying right now. Like tears are coming out of my eyes without me making the crying sounds. Okay, so I don't even have a mask. I can't wake my husband up, he's sleeping. He worked 14 hours. And you're not allowed inside the dentist's office without a mask. So I don't know what kind of shit I'm gonna be getting right now when I go there. You know, the nurse lady at the counter is gonna probably be like bitching at me. And that's another thing. If you have panic attacks and panic disorder and, <coughs> oh shit, I didn't put my seatbelt on. See? What was I saying before I got so rudely interrupted? Yeah, I forgot to put my seatbelt on. And it's because I'm so fucking nervous that I'm um, not even thinking it's not even the phone it's not even the distraction so um yeah so like the problem he here is is that I don't even know how to get there I swear to god I don't even know what I'm doing right now I didn't even turn on GPS because I'm filming right now and I can't and the problem is is that I got to keep going back why can't they just do this shit in one day and be done with it you know what I mean 
just do the shit in one day and be done with it. No, 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 no. I got to keep coming back for more chair torture. And like I was saying, I'm having chest pains. And it could be because I, I have bad health. I have edema. And it happened after my mother died. Like, um, I they found it a large heart. And, I, and that's another thing. I was supposed to go back to the doctor, the cardiologist. And, uh... You know, they, they found that I had an enlarged heart and I never went back. And my edema and the swelling is getting worse and worse. So I feel like I'm in a hole right now, like a pitiful, disgusting um, hole. Because I'm terrified of going to the dentist. I'm terrified of doctor's appointments. I'm terrified of fucking everything that has to do with going out. And right now, I can't believe I'm driving the, the damn car and I'm shaking and I have nobody to even hold my hand, nobody to go in there with me. My mother's dead. My mother, who is my greatest supporter, is gone. And I'm not very happy right now, and I might freak out. I might freak out in the dentist chair. And I'm going to have to tell her and warn her that if I'm, non unco bleh, I'm uncomfortable and I feel like I have to get out of that chair while she's in the middle of that surgery, she's going to have to stop everything. And she might not, not like it too much. And the problem with people with anxiety is we're afraid of people not liking us. Most people with anxiety are people pleasers. We don't like to cause a problem. And I don't want to cause anybody any kind of inconvenience, especially a doctor. And uh, this is the problem. So fuck, fuck, fuck. Excuse my language. When I curse, I when I'm nervous, I curse. And fuck this shit. I'm like fucking terrified right now. And I don't know how long this surgery is going to take. It could take, they said, 30 minutes to two hours, depending on how bad this is. And so I have to go back in a series for this one tooth and then go back in a series for each and every other tooth. So I'm not too thrilled about this right now. And I'm feeling like pretty fucked up. And I'm doing 30 and some guy just passed me because I'm driving too slow. Usually, I, when I was okay, when I didn't have agoraphobia, I used to speed, actually. I used to get pulled over a lot. So, okay, that's how nervous I am that I'm not speeding. Okay, I'm an asshole. And why is the road all fucked up? Look at the road. It's like Pothole City over here. All right. Yeah, Long Island. Um, oh, my God, where is the dentist's office? Shit. I don't even remember where it is. I think it's over here. I'm gonna make a right and let's see what happens and then a left and I don't know how to get there right now uh, what's this fucking lady doing okay I have the right of the way bitch okay I feel better I just called the perfect stranger a bitch so I don't even know okay where is the dent oh here it is I found it guys it was like it was like my body um, took me here oh why is there a lady at the door looking at this right now how embarrassing Okay, hold on. So I'm so embarrassed. This like um, lady is staring at me from the, the door of the dentist. I don't even know if I parked correctly. I am too embarrassed to get out of the car right now to see if my car is parked. Like it's probably two feet away from the curb. Shit. And she's watching me. That's another thing. When I'm driving, if somebody's watching me, I get so nervous that I feel like, um, like more anxiety. So I don't know. Yeah, this sounds crazy to most of you. Like, you normies out there, you don't know what it's like to live like this. And through the mirror, it looks like I'm close to the curb. Um, I hope so. I'll have to get out and check. All right, I'm going into the dentist. When I come out, I'll let you know how it goes, if I'm still alive. I moved the car. I parked it in front of someone else's house. I don't need any scrutiny right now. All right, I'm walking into the dentist. Holy shit, I can't breathe. I can't really breathe right now. And for those of you with anxiety, you know exactly what I'm going through right now. You know how badly this sucks. And what time is it? I don't even freaking know. Holy shit. Holy shit. Actually, I got 15 more minutes until I have to go in. And the worst part is I really need a cigarette really badly right now. And a lot of you are like, oh, God, she's a smoker. Well, I need a cigarette to calm down. Um, and I can't because, you know, I just brushed my teeth. I'm going into the dentist. It's like... You know, I don't want to go in there with an ashtray mouth. Um, fuck. Fuck, this is so hard. Again, the worst part is sitting in the... Let me just shut my door. Hold on. The worst part is sitting in the chair and I can't get out. That really messes me up mentally. 
just the fact that I can't do something like um like I I don't know if it's an authority thing, it's a control thing, but being out of control makes me feel like the worst anxiety. Knowing I can't do something or somebody's telling me I have to do something or I can't do something flips me out. I don't care about the pain. And the worst part is those drills. Tell me about those drills, right guys? The sound of those drills, and I'm probably shouting right now, sorry. I'm so nervous, when I'm nervous I shout. Um, the sounds of those drills are enough to make you go through the roof if you have any kind of dental fear. And the fact that right now I can't breathe and they're gonna stick something called a dam in my mouth, which is like some big rubber kind of like bullshit. And then you feel like you're gagging and you can't breathe. And then somebody's big, fat, hairy hands are going to be in my mouth. Like, all right, well, well, they have gloves on. Yeah, okay, at least they won't be hairy. But the fact that somebody's gloved hands are going in my mouth, um, I can't move. I can't get up and run. is flipping me out. Fuck, I don't have a mask. And I just went up to the door and it says, you cannot come in here without a mask. I'm rummaging through my husband's car, not one mask. And I just called and nobody answered and I left a message saying, I don't have a mask. Can you please leave one at the door? You see, people with anxiety worry about shit like this. Oh my God. Now I got to go there and cause a ruckus. If you know what I mean, I'm going to walk in there without a mask. And then everyone's going to be all pissed at me because they think I'm like, um, you know, not complying with their rules. And now I have more anxiety. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. I'll check in with you guys again in a little bit. We'll see what's going on. Oh boy, oh boy. Here we go. Well, shit. Shit, and there's that sign. Great, now they're gonna hate me. I don't have the mask. Don't know what to do. I did it, guys. I got the root canal. I'm out, and I'm going to my car now. So, my verdict. It wasn't nearly half as bad, but, oh, let me get this mask off. <laughs> they were kind enough to give me a mask. It wasn't nearly half as bad as I thought it was going to be. And uh, I made a big stink out of nothing. And so <laughs> the whole time I was anticipating it to be the most horrible, most terrible thing in the world. And it turned out that I fell asleep in the chair. Yes, me. I fell asleep in the chair, out cold, and started snoring. And, uh... <laughs> I feel great. I did it. And I'm going back in like, I don't know, like 12 days or 10 days or whatever it is. And I did it, guys. So, yeah, um, if you're afraid of um, going to the dentist, it's not as bad as you may think if you have a dentist that will work with you. And Dr. Ta uh, Tanya Savardia in, um, well, it's really like Le Levittown, Bethpage, New York. Um, is a phenomenal, phenomenal dentist. And uh, I'm gonna actually put her, um, you know, information in the description below if you live in Long Island. She was so wonderful to me that she just made this whole experience way less scary than I ever thought it would ever be. And again, Tanya Savardia. This is a, a shout out for Tanya. Um, family dental Savardia fan family dental awesome awesome sauce I haven't driven a car in so long I just turned the wipers on by accident oh shit how do you even turn these suckers off I forgot how to drive cars okay so if you're um, having to get a root canal here's what basically happens you go in and if you're nervous you practically crap your pants they place you in the chair and they give you a numbing needle. And the needle, I didn't look at it. I made sure my eyes were closed. And she gave me the needle and she said, I just gave you the needle. And I said, wait, you gave me a needle? And she's like, yeah, I gave you a needle. I did not even know she gave me a needle. But she made sure, this is the thing, if you have anxiety, make sure you ask for a numbing um, anesthetic um, that ends up um, not having something where it increases your adrenaline. They have different kinds of... Um, like numbing agents, and some of them will actually increase your anxiety. They will increase your adrenaline and cortisol levels. She gave me one that actually is for people with anxiety that does not increase your heart rate or your cortisol levels. Make sure you ask for one of those. Okay, step two, she gave me the numbing needle. 
my <laughs> face froze and I hate that feeling. That's another thing for people, a lot of people with dentistry anxiety or anxiety in general or health anxiety, like you're afraid of certain health ailments. When your face freezes from those um, needles, you panic because the feeling of the numbness, you don't like your face feeling paralyzed. Um, she gave me one that wears off much quicker than normal. Um, I'm out of the dentist's office right now and it's starting to wear off, which is great. Even though I can't feel my nose, <laughs> my nose, actually, I don't even feel it. Like I could punch myself in the face and I wouldn't feel it right now. But, um, okay. So they numb you, then they start drilling very like with fi It feels like I didn't watch by the way. I kept my eyes shut. It feels like they're sticking files, like metal files into your teeth and sort of like, sort of, how could I put it? Like, you know, when you're filing your nails, you follow what I'm saying? Like that shimmying motion and you really don't feel it. I mean, you just feel like the motion of her hand and it's a little sore at points, but um, I didn't bark or cry over it um, because I didn't want another numbing needle. The worst feeling is that numbing, like paralyzed face thing. So if I would have cried and said, ow, ow, it hurts a little, it feels sore, she would have gave me another needle and I didn't want needle number two. So um, then they do that and they clean out the canal with some kind of, it felt like freezing water because it was dripping down my neck and I actually liked that feeling of the ice cold water um, <laughs> actually leaking out of my mouth down my neck. Um, it actually made me um, wake up and snap out of it. And then the next thing, she did a quick x-ray to see if she got like the whole entire canal and the root uh, cleaned out. And she said, no, you got really long roots. And I said, oh shit. She said, we just have to do a little more. And she did that little filing motion back and forth with some kind of like water she was shooting into it. It felt like water or ice cold water. I guess she was cleaning out the canal. And then she did an x-ray again, checked it. She had to go back in there again and do a little more. Um, and then she did another x-ray again and she said, we got it. And uh, so you'll need to come back um, on the 26th. So uh, yeah, and we're gonna uh, finish the rest of the tooth that day. So yeah, she was trying to aim for doing the root canal in one day. Sadly, she could not um, do it in one day. Um, and I have to go back for the same tooth again. But. Okay, so now I know what to expect. It is not as bad as you have it in your mind. In your mind, it is terrifying. It is frightening. It is scary. Um, pretty much, I almost like totally was in a coma in the chair. I closed my eyes, um, would not look at anything, and I was listening to music that she was playing, and I started to nod off, and I was starting to snore, and it was not nearly bad a half as bad as I had it in my head. In my head, it was going to be terror. It was going to be like absolute and complete horror. I was going to be in pain. I was going to want to jump out of the chair and none of that happened. So in your mind, sometimes your mind is your own worst enemy. So if you're thinking about getting dentistry done, you're terrified, you have anxiety, you have agoraphobia, find a dentist that specializes with people that have this problem because they will totally understand you. She gave me um, actually the power to tell her that anytime I needed her to stop, she would stop and give me breaks. And I did not have to use that at all because just because she gave me that power um, to actually tell me I can raise my hand and she'll stop at any time actually put me at ease and put me in control and in the driver's seat. So there you go. That was my day and the root canal was actually splendid. Thanks for watching.